This is Eldritch Buds, an actual play Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition podcast. What's up, Eldritch Buddies? What up, buddies? Sitting at the virtual table with me today is Scott, sneaky, stealthy, and with a man in a bag, Cambrio Voss, Wills. The level three sorcerer, level one rogue, Zed, who needs help desperately. Speedy. The fighter bard, Jode, who is currently a little singed. And Josh. Uh, level four, Loxodon Druid Jinxie, whose hooves haven't been trimmed in about five days. Is that long? That's also, all you, you would know. That's all you would know. Locks and don't have do hooves. You, oh, self dude, elephants definitely have hooves. I bet you just on like his bottom, like his legs. Yeah, yeah he's like he doesn't got, have like, human two, feet. He's, he's got like elephant like legs. They stand it up. Yeah, he's, yeah, like Mr. Tumble. That's what yes. I'm thinking. But yeah, but if he was no. a woolly mammoth, <laughs> right. it's, well, it's, it's his your character. character. Let him have hooves. I'm Connor, your DM. Let's get into it. <laughs> you also have hooves. <laughs> But they're magic. Previously on Eldritch Buds, after finding out that the chain was carrying a dead beholder, our heroes quickly realized they should return the cart, only to find the chain has already found them. With some quick thinking, Zed convinces the chain to bring our heroes along for the ride to Capilon. On the road, our exhausted heroes are ambushed by a ragged group of hooded thieves. Worried about his cargo, the chain takes off to Capilon, abandoning our heroes. During the combat, Cambero and Jode find out that these villains are associated with the ones who stole Emily. As the battle nears its end, the two of them capture one of the hooded figures and put them in the bag of holding to be interrogated later. Will our heroes get their shipment back? What will the hooded figure tell our heroes? Let's find out. So last episode, you ran into a little bit of an issue uh, as you're traveling with the chain. You were attacked by some individuals that wore a similar sigil to that that you've seen before in the Erasmus estate. Could they potentially be the same individuals who attacked Mildred, Korg, and the Erasmuses? Mildred. How will we ever find out? What do you guys want to do? Uh... Cambrio's just got to, like, hype down for a second. It's been a big couple hours. Um, last couple times he's revealed himself to be a changeling to people. It hasn't gone so swimmingly. So he's starting to realize what he's done. Um, he's just kind of like, yeah, yeah, he's just sort of, like, breathing really fast. Not quite into shock, but it's very much like coming down from, like, a super adrenaline rush. And sort of realizing, like, what actions he's done in the past couple hours. So I'm just, I'm just sitting there sort of breathing and kind of like looking off into the into the woods. Uh, Zed's gonna notice notice that, and uh, I'm gonna walk over to Cambrio, um, put a hand on his shoulder, and just, hey, hey are you all right? Um, Cambrio flinches. I'm gonna he flinches when you do that. It kind of shakes off and just looks like he's sort of like coming back into his body almost. Um, he's gonna look at you like it's. You're not. You're not gonna hurt me. No, what? Why would we do, do that? We just we would never. We've been fighting together for for days. That hasn't stopped people before when they've found out the truth about me. There's nothing wrong with you. Why would we hurt you? <sighs> to try telling that to just the, the folks in the field here, to. The folks up in Tavir. I ended up where I ended up, not because I just was sightseeing and choosing to just venture around the country. I really didn't have a lot of options left. I mean, if you if you look look around you, buddy, we got Jinxie. Uh, not really welcome many places. We've got a uh, Warforge run out of his home. You you kind of fit right in. Cambria looks up and I'm just I guess I hadn't thought about it like that I had friends before again this has happened to people close to me 
I had a friend Eric. I was, I was being I was a dwarf named Harden back then, a half dwarf I should say. Uh, so I thought we were friends, and then one day we were showing off for a girl, and I don't I don't have a lot of skills, but I have one very impressive skill I'd say. And next thing I knew, my my family's home was being burned out, and my we were on the run as freaks. Just, it really hasn't gone well. So, sorry if I'm a little timid about that. Are you kidding me? You got a freaking sweet power, man. Be able to change into whoever you want? Look, I mean, I'm a robot. I don't know what really matters about what your skin looks like, but um, it's you get to like be who you want to be. You got to be a dwarf, and now you're. Wait, is, is Cambrio even use? Are you still Cambrio, or is that a is that a name? I gesture to uh, all all names are names. First off, and then I gesture to sort of the visage of Cambrio and go, "This is Cambrio." Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna look around at my friends again. And realize like again, it's been a short time, but it's been a weird time, and it is sort of just like this motley kind of group of misfits, people who might sort of be able to relate to the empathy or to like empathize to my situation. Um, and then and Cambrio starts to shrink a little bit. Cambrio goes so he's sitting around like classic six six one ish, um, goes down to about five foot five. Skin starts to go from like a ruddy tanned kind of looking like someone who's just spent too much time outdoors or maybe doesn't have an indoors to go to um, and becomes very, very pale um, to the point of translucence. Uh, the hair stays kind of the same. If anything, it just goes almost more white, but it's still very much that shock of, of whitish blonde hair. Um, and you see a small, slight, you know, young boy um and i'm gonna go what and this is Hayes. Hayes, what is Hayes? Hayes, Hayes is me i'm gonna uh stick out my hand in front of me and say well it's a it's a pleasure to meet you i'm gonna shake your hand and it's, it's just an adult shaking a Shaking a 13-year-old boy's hand. <coughs> I'm sorry, 13? Oh my goodness. Uh, it's, well, you saw a choke uh, stick. <laughs> I'm really sorry about that now. <laughs> Time for Jim. I'll be honest, I had, I, I had to grow up fast the last couple of years. Trust me, it's that's not the first one I've seen. First metal one, but not the first <laughs> one I've seen. Oh, God. There's not a lot of privacy on the streets. Well, hey, you know... Welcome, welcome to the family, officially then, um, you know, from one misfit to another, there's no judgment, no judgment between these four, that's for sure. Jinxie's going to give you the, the, the arm wrap on your other arm as you shook Zed's hand, the love wrap. <laughs> with your, with your, your yeah, trunk? the trunk. Uh, I weep, I openly weep, I've never been this accepted anywhere. Oh god, why well, couldn't have been filter been like this? This will be better. This will be better. Those guys are snobby douchebags, that's why. They really are. They they might have killed my mom, I don't know. I haven't oh. seen her since. We got a few things to talk about when we get back down this day. It's all the same thing, man. I told you they They burned our house out and then I've been on the run since I don't know. If she's alive, I don't know where she's gone. They wanted blood, and we fled. When, uh, when was this? How long ago? <sighs> well, we were Kazam. I was a babe, just barely off my mother's breast. Uh, when I was, when it was in the filter, I was there for about three years, and then Tavia was short. Tavia was a, a quick and and brutal turnaround. I met a man named I met a man named Cambrio. Uh, when I was just begging on the streets, and uh, 
Remember that story I told you about the Y-Rex ring? Mm-hmm. I didn't... I didn't steal it. Showed I was, up. I was digging through trash just because I did. Um, and I was just behind... It was a large, quiet house up on the hill. I thought, big house, good garbage. Makes sense for me. Um... And there was a crash from above top. And I saw coming through a window, uh, it looked like an arrow, but it was trailing something. And then I saw a man who was a man who a couple of days before had given me some bread on the street, a couple of coins and introduced himself. And I saw him fall and he landed and I heard guards coming. And then I hid, or I hit him, sorry. And then when they approached me, I, I'll be honest, I'm pretty proud of this part. Uh, I turned and I bade my eyes milky white. I told them, told them I had seen nothing. They awkwardly realized they had counted a blind boy in an alley and just sort of left me to my devices as I buried my friend in the trash. Um, I forgot to change them back before I went back to camp. That did not go well. He saw my eyes. He called me a freak. He swore at me. And then he pulled this out. And Cambrio gestures to the hand crossbow on his hip right now. Um, And he shot. And I was angry. I was just, I've done nothing but help people in my short time on this world and just... Every single time people react with fear and distrust and anger. And I just didn't want to be vulnerable anymore. And that's just, without thought, I felt something form in my hand and my wrist snapped forward. There was a green blur and he dropped. There wasn't a mark or a cut on him. He just stopped. To his jacket. I took the parcel he had, and I got out of town. And I found a mysterious and strange note in my pocket. And then you fellas know the rest. So you killed the guy for the ring? I didn't know he had the ring. I killed him because he was trying to kill me. I had just saved his life, and he just tried to shoot me with a crossbow. No, oh, sorry, I understand you killing him because that guy is a piece of shit, but... Kind of, yeah. Um, he was wearing said ring, or he had the ring on him? He had a little bundle on his belt. I'm assuming it's what he took. Ah, uh, gotcha. There was a couple coins, a very fancy pen. Cambrio digs a very fancy pen out of his pocket. It's just like a silver... It's like a dark sort of Aston Martin cream with like a silver inlay. And it's just like a very, very nice pen. Uh, it's like, I can't, it's, don't have paper, but I have this and the ring. Yeah. So, yous have a found ring. I don't know if they would see it like that, but technically, they, yes. They would if I brought it back. Then if, uh. They're not going to ask you where you found it, or... Like, we don't even know... Why would... Why do they care about this ring so much? If it's... I'm, I'm, Aren't you curious? I mean, Connor, if, if I can make a history check to see if I know where this... If I do know where this ring is, or why it's important, but... Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, two. No idea. Yeah, no, but you do recall that it has the, the family, DLC. Yeah, it has the family crest, like the, the wolf. It's made out of uh, like a very impressive metal, and there's those two ruby eyes in it. So you can tell that value is definitely something. You're not sure that you know the historical significance or the purpose, though. Well, I know it's uh, it's definitely got the family crest on it. Uh, we should at least try to find out so we get ours worth. What if it's worth more than just Grimble? That would be... You know what? It could be, but 
Don't you ever want to go to a deal knowing the, the value of what you have? The problem is, most people who would probably know something about this have probably an inner workings with the Wyrex. But we could, which is an issue. We could figure that out at some point. Um, we, we had they something to do. We, oh, I'm sorry, I've, I've gotten us off track here. We had something to... Cambrio panically remembers the bag. Um, goes, <gasps> and then it just runs back over and just opens it up. Um, it has been 12 minutes, Connor. <laughs> yeah, it was timing too. Opening uh, the bag of holding, you find the last remaining uh, uh, bandit uh, with the band on his arm that was supposed to be interrogated by the group, uh, not breathing. Gabriel okay, starts to do CPR. Uh, roll me a God medicine check. Damn it, live! Roll me a medicine check with disadvantage because you're exhausted. Okay. Can I help? Oh, yes. God. This man's not looking good. Before guys. he rolls? Just to uh, get out that disadvantage? Sure, yeah. I'll, I'll allow you to help. It's a. It's, he's been two minutes brain dead, Scott, so it's going to be. Oh, God. Hey, 15. Uh, any of our healers want to tag in here? I don't have the spell slots for it. <laughs> I'm also out of spell slots. I'm keeping that, that blood circulating. Those organs are yeah. those organs are fresh for harvest. Yeah, it doesn't look like anything's happening. <laughs> the case <laughs> goes cold again. <laughs> oh. You motherfucker! Hey, guys, do some good RP, but the the real time is going to take effect. Yeah, let's get sucked. That was real time. Oh. I was speaking in character the whole time. I know. <laughs> did you know? Ten did you know? I played. I thought it would be so funny if he suffocated. <laughs> <laughs> you could have yeah. stopped me at any time. He did. You he, even yeah. he did come to me before with this idea, so I was trying to oh play it true. Oh my god! Oh, that's we got played. Some, that's some bullshit right so there. So he's dead. So there goes our. our uh, he looks unresponsive. I will say, <laughs> if you'd like to try a medicine check with disadvantage, it's gonna be hard as fuck to get this guy to start breathing again. Someone's no gotta have. Jesse's gonna medicine. cast your wounds on this guy if he can. Okay. Even though he he just has brain wounds. Brain wounds. Um. Yeah. So I just have to touch him. What level? Uh, level one. Level one, level one. Yeah, so the... What color is your magic, Josh? Mm, dirt colored. Okay, so you it's you put brown. your Bigfoot-esque hands on this uh, this dirty human, and a, a, even more dirt yeah, I just, comes I just out of here. I just passed dirt through him. Just like... <laughs> like, like Radagast the Brown, yeah. just filling with natural energy. <laughs> Uh, and you can see that the muscles beneath his chest, like, boop, 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 and then nothing. Oh. It was a valiant effort, but... Wait, we got, we got something. We got something. Come, come, help. I'm gonna search through his pockets. <laughs> can I do an athletics check for my CPR ability? I know, that would be medicine. Damn. They don't have a decent medicine here. Um... Plus five. Yeah, okay. You got it. Better than mine. Jinxie's going to start yeah. giving him mouth to Let's mouth, go. but attaching his trunk to, his trunk, trunk to, trunk to right mouth. Right on top of his and mouth. You're, like, you're doing just, like CPR. <laughs> well, he can definitely inject more oxygen than we could. That's And he's like hands-free to do yeah, other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's actually a... It's actually a fair argument. Um, I was going to make you roll at disadvantage, but that's, that's fun, so... Now, here's the thing, Jinxie. Yep. It is a DC 19 oh. to get this man to come back up again with no, with nothing. With it's no only mostly dead. Yeah. <gasps> this dead. Is yeah last, and this is the last chance because he's been dead for two um, minutes. This is a, <laughs> this is a shame. Come on, Rolling Gods. Inspire him. Uh, I don't 21. Have that either. Yeah, 21. Yes! 21. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Incredible. Oh. Woo! So, so, what a uh, roll. I'll say that the, the, the dirt magic of your cure wounds kind of restarting his heart gave you a little bit of hope. Oh, maybe if I, you know, really slam down and really, really work my magic here, 
and I can't believe I'm saying this, but yes, you oh, restart this. My God, with my trunk, man's heart, and he is alive. Fuck you, Scott. So you can hear he's like, <laughs> I'm, I'm to be honest, I'm thrilled. I got to do the thing I wanted oh. to do and suffer no consequence. Oh, you're welcome. Oh my goodness, you. Uh, what? Oh, it's just amnesia. You guys are barbarians. I yeah, you better start talking. Or there'll be more where that came We from. are not the bad guys. I should You're welcome. I just saved your life. Can I, uh... Can I pick him up? And just, like, hold him by, like, the scruff of his hood? Sure, yeah. So there's a lot going on right now. If we want to be doing differing things, i.e. attacking the person, uh, Hayes, then we should roll initiative. Otherwise, you know, if we want to take turns doing this, <laughs> you let me know. So, yeah. So if you, uh... If if you want to pick him up, that's fine. He's weak and struggling. I don't see you failing this check, so go ahead and he's in your he's in your arms. So I got him nice and close a bit. Listen here. Was you at the Erasmus estate three, four days ago? Yes. Oh, it's so uh, so hard to think without. Uh... Without water. Oh, it's so... I just... I, I don't know if you realize, but I was fucking dead a minute ago! I'll talk if I can have some care, please. Some TLC. I'm gonna, like, pinch his mouth open with my one hand. And I'll just be like, Jinxie spit in his mouth. Ah, no, 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 up a dirty big loogie. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. just shoots it in his mouth. Uh, super gross. I'll have you roll dexterity with advantage because it's your trunk. Is he making a con save for, like, beaver fever or whatever? Who knows what is about to happen to this poor man? <laughs> um, with advantage? Or? Uh, yeah. Uh, 17. God damn it. Yep. <laughs> he gets lugified. He got lugified. All right. I'm going to close his mouth and be like, there's your water. <laughs> That's so fucking Now tell gross. me. Tell me, where were you three or four days ago? Oh, you're going back in that bag. We might not open it again. Uh, sure. So for the purposes of any good interrogation, I'm going to have different levels of charisma, intimidation, persuasion, deception uh, checks throughout this. So it seems like you're trying to intimidate this individual. I will oh, let you roll... I will let you roll that uh, with your charisma or your strength. Can I can, can I help? I uh, sure. Yeah, you can help, but okay. it, because he's exhausted, it's just going to equal out to a straight roll. Perfect. I find the face of one of his dead friends and make myself look like him, but like the face is all fucked up and wounded, and I go, "Don't end up like me." So, do you just want me to do like an intimidation check, or? Uh... Yeah, but I, I realize that your bard's your charisma is usually high, but like, or is probably high, but. Uh, Strong guys can kind of flex their muscles with strength if they have a low charisma for intimidation. Like a, so, like a physical intimidation. Yeah, dealer's choice on your end. Gotcha. They're both plus four, unless you let me do it athletics flexing. And then... I sure won't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he parkours up a wall. Ha! Uh, 16. 16? Uh, <laughs> I mean, you just spit in this guy's mouth, so... Uh, he goes, uh, he goes, uh... First of all, <coughs> gross, okay? That's not... You guys are monsters. And I don't know. I, I It's It's been... I can't, I can't really tell where I've been the last couple days. It's been very foggy. And I, uh, I, I don't really have a great uh, memory. And you can see that as he's trying to think about what you're asking him, there's a visceral reaction from him. Like he's kind of twitching, and it's almost causing him pain to think about it. It's very strange. Can I do like a Arcana check or something on yes, him to see if he's may. got like a skills, 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 skills? Yeah, it's an eight. Yeah, with an eight, it's tough to say whether or not the magic that you're picking up is the magical beings all around you, and Zed and Chode and Jinxie. Um, there's certainly an arcane energy here, but it's really hard to tell the source. Okay. 
are you all right? Like, when you have a tick, like, what's <clears throat> going on? What? Ah. Stop that. Stop. We're not even doing anything to you. Stop that. I'm sorry. I, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't really. And then you can Sit see. Sit in his mouth again. No, no, no. You can see as he's struggling and struggling and struggling, something clicks. He goes calm and he goes, No, I wasn't. Wherever you said I was. Very different tone, very different. Uh, you weren't where we said you were? I don't know what you're talking about. He looks very bl- blank. Now, shut me down if I'm being repetitive here, but given the change of like tone, behavior, mm-hmm. everything, I'd like mm-hmm. to roll an Arcana check. Sure. Now. Just remember that all these checks are with disadvantage, guys, because of your yeah. exhaustion. Definitely. First one's an 18. Second one's an 18. With an 18, yes, absolutely. It's quite clear uh, to yourself, Zed, as somebody both with memory issues and with arcane ability, that both are kind of happening in this man's brain at the same time. You can see that something just clicked in his brain as if something has taken over his consciousness. Uh, it's not its not as if a, like a, a demonic voice is being spoken through him, but it's different enough that it's almost like a puppeteer is controlling this uh, interaction at this point in time. So it's like a, a live, a live, like someone's currently interpreting. Uh, you, you're not sure about that, okay. but it's certainly the, the, the voice and the iter- iterations and everything coming from this individual seem very different than seconds earlier. Can I roll I a get some shit check uh, to see if I would recognize this type of, like magic being used, whether it's a specific spell or curse or something I would know. Sure. Disadvantage. Yeah. Uh, that's 13. That's 16 to 13. You're fairly certain that this is some kind of curse, just for nothing else than looking at this individual. Like it looks like he's very gaunt he has bags under his eyes. He's very dirty. I don't know if you, you remember my description the first time you ran into these individuals, but they they smell. It's like, it's like they've been in the woods for weeks or months. Like they they look terrible. And now with this piece of information, with somebody else perhaps controlling this individual, you're picking up probably a curse, but you're not sure that you can put, point your finger to it. Okay, I'm gonna uh, cast charm person. Okay. See if I can override this. Ooh, nice. Um, that's going to be a, sorry, a DC 14 wisdom save. For okay. Uh, a disadvantage because he was almost dead. That's, sorry, I, <laughs> pardon me? I just said a disadvantage because he was almost dead. I was just being a He dead. was dead. <laughs> that's true. He um, definitely was dead. Did he pass? Uh, yeah, so he got, a, he got a natural 18 plus some stuff yeah. here, so... Uh, you can tell that this is going to be a little bit more difficult than just charming this person. Cambio goes, sorry, Hayes goes into the voice chat uh, with just uh, Choden Wills because he's trying to keep it DL from the prisoner. Do we just put him back in the bag? Um, we, just, we time it, we'll pay attention this time, and then we just pour him out when we're ready. Will we, though? Yeah, Do it's... He, he was just saying he wasn't cursed when he came out of the bag. There's there's definitely... There's definitely magic at, at play here. I just I can't figure out what or or who. Um, we can't but someone's leave him. Con- controlling him, it feels like. No, definitely not. I just... Can I roll a perception or investigation? I'm not sure which it would be. I just want to see if I would notice anybody, like, slinking in the bushes. I don't know whether this person is nearby or not. Sure, that's fine. What do you want it to be, sorry, perception or investigation? Uh, there's no one around, so it doesn't matter. Okay, well, for let the record shows that there's a I think it's like a hive mind thing. Yeah. We're clear. Do we just beat up unconscious and see if that works oh I'm down for that I'll head bottom well since he's like at my face ah uh, yeah that's yeah do it okay uh, so roll me an attack actually and I assume you're doing non-lethal da- non-lethal damage but I just want to see how kind of how much sense you knock into this this guy 
his body's in great shape. It's just he had no oxygen, so it's not like he's got yeah, previous no, wounds. Uh, 23. Holy shit. Yeah. So, you, you ring the guy's bell, that's for sure. Uh, I will say that as you headbutt, there's such force in it that you actually let go of him and he crumples onto the ground. And as he's gathering himself and he's rubbing his temples and he's kind of like shaking his head, the first voice comes back. What the hell was that? Oh my goodness. Ah, I already have memory issues. Why Why the head? Oh my God. You're being where controlled. am I? What? Where, where were you? Where are you from? Where Where am I from? What what's you? your What's your name? My name? My uh? I wow! I haven't. Oh, it's Craig. Spelled how? The uh, I always got bullied for this when I was a kid. The weird way. C R A I A I G. Yeah, you. Yeah. Craig. Listen, it is a weird way of spelling it. Who, Craig. Who, so who are you guys supposed to be? Well, why I, are we here? I, I want to like rip the armband off his arm and hold it up and be like, what is this? Like the little sigil. Who, you, this symbol, Sorry, just, this... I need to roll bear, something. What does this that. mean? So you show him the armband and he freaks out. He says, get that away from me right now. I... I Get it away! Get it away! I pocket it. Okay. Uh, he he looks really nervous, like a cornered rabbit. Like he's kind of backing up and he's looking around, like he doesn't recognize where he is. Where have you seen that before? I I don't. I'm not really. Before I finish that sentence, I'm going to ask. Uh, it's been long enough here for an extra persuasion check here. So Jinxie, as you ask that question, please let me know. How the disadvantaged roll goes. Um, okay. Ooh, that's a two, and that's also a two. That's two twos. Two twos, like a ballerina. Um, so, yeah, this this individual, Craig, who's sweating and nervous and panicking in front of you, is like, I don't, I don't even really know. I just know that it's bad news. I... Oh, where are we? What... We're in the woods, Craig. The woods. Where in the woods? I what don't know. city? Here's what? The woods. I don't. The woods aren't in cities. That's stupid. You got brain damage, Craig. We're still. Uh, we're still yeah. in Kumdor, right? Like the province of Kumdor. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah, we are in the province. Are, oh no, in Tidalbrook. Yeah, jeez. Yeah, know your provinces, guys. What? Tidalbrook, and then. His eyes shift. Hit him His again. State goes blank. And he says, Enough! Stop toying with me. Hit him again. Again. Enough. I hit him. Do you, okay, because he's he's ready in action if somebody's coming at him. I hit him. Okay, so he's also going to be attacking you. I'm going to say let's do a contested grapple check here to see who hits who first. Okay, contested grapple. Yeah, so, stre- so is... strength and add your uh, uh, proficiency if you uh, are proficient in it, but you're at disadvantage. Oh, he got a three anyway, so. I got 13 and a nine. Perfect. So you are currently holding this guy down. Uh, you're grappling him. Okay. Okay. I, I just want to just just uh, the just look. I'm short. I'm shorter than him, so I'm just gonna jump up and headbutt him in the bottom of the chin. Uh, okay, perfect. Okay. <laughs> That's a six and an eleven. So I just I'm pretty short. Yeah, you you just graze off his chin, and this individual actually. Uh, are you still are you still grappling him? Yeah. That's why I couldn't hit him, is because I was hugging him too tight. Yeah, that's fine. He says in his calm voice, If you have any means to seeing that girl again, you will let me go. Who are you? Where is she? 
Give me a name, and I'll Did let, you him, let him go. go. I'm talking to him, real, real close. I'm hugging, I'm hugging him, and I'm looking up at him like he's my dad. This, who are you? Uh, I make my eyes look like snake eyes. That's fine. He's not. Uh, he's he's not talking to you guys anymore. I uh, psychic chat to the to the group. I don't. All right, Captain needs some support here from his from his mates. Do I do I let him go? Yeah, he's he's not going to be able to run away from all four of us. So let him go, and let's see if playing it his way gets us anywhere. I'm gonna. I've decided to let you go all on my own by myself because I'm confident. So I'm gonna release you now, and I back away. But like, staying up in combat, ready to try to look like I'm doing this all planned. Sure. So he just uh, he he also gets up and dusts himself off. Uh, looks at the four of you and lunges at Kate at Hayes. Let's see, Hayes. It's not very good. Does a 12 hit you? It does not. Okay, so he comes slashing at you with a dagger that he had kept hidden in the back of his robes. Uh, he is savage. He looks crazy. He has a awful look in his awful look in his eye. Chode, hold him down. I got him. I'll run over and tackle him. Okay. Can Grapple. Jinxie also try to sit on him? Sure. Yeah. Go ahead. You can roll. Uh, you guys can both roll. Oh, God. Natty won. Uh, 18. <laughs> you, you, okay. you kill him. You <laughs> kill us. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. So he got a 14 and failed. So I would say that showed you have him kind of down in a... Um, almost like you're arresting him. Like, you have his hands behind his back. He's belly on the ground. And Jinxie, you're sitting right beside him. Like, yeah, I'm here, too. <laughs> Just in the dirt. <laughs> Jinxie, give him a little uh, trunk kiss. Really... F- really frick with them. I just go with, Spin his with, mouth. The, with the, uh, yeah, with the guys, trunk, I guess give him a little wet willy. I'm gonna go back into our chat and just say we're not dealing with the guy whose body it is. Those types of what? things are doing literally nothing. He's being controlled by someone else. We can't do anything to this guy that will get us anywhere. I kick him in the head. <laughs> uh, it's roll. worked every yeah, single roll, time. Roll for me. Uh, actions. I should have just rolled a real dice. <laughs> I should have just rolled a real dice. That's a six. And that's a seven. Just, okay, yeah. I miss. I miss you a miss prone man's head. You, yeah. you, Charlie Brown, run by. Just <laughs> yeah. Now I'm he's gonna, still laying on the ground by his head, looking at him, being like, now I'm down here with you. I'm, I'm going to kneel side down side. beside the guy's head mm-hmm. and say, who am I really talking to? Roll me a persuasion check. Fifteen. Ten. Uh, ten. He goes, You seem intelligent, but not nearly intelligent enough. <laughs> Says the coward behind another man. Oh, this other man means nothing to me. I'm, well, that's very clear. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure if your real purpose is to find the girl, we'll be seeing each other soon. And with that, you can see that the uh, man in front of you, uh, his neck turns around no. exorcist style, and it snaps. Oh. Can't be a rifle through his pockets. I stand up. Okay. Well, a Strong breeze on that kick, Kimbrew. There's a dead end. Sometimes I don't know my own strength. And, uh... Well, that fucking sucks. You... Sorry, Hayes, you looked through his pockets? I did, I I did, in fact, look through his pockets. Give me an investigation check. Okay. With disadvantage... It's a nat 20 and an 8. Oh. Oof. That's tough. Um, so the good news with an eight, even though it's a disadvantage, is the DC is low enough that you find the note in the pocket. Um, and in, on that note is written, 
Team B, you're with me. And as a signature, it's the eye and the kind of linear lines underneath it that is exactly the same as the armband. And that is used as the signature. Huh. I'm going to show it to the other guys in the group and say, we need to find... We need to find someone who knows what this is. Then, this uh, is this is our only lead at this point to finding Emily. And now I I don't know if this is a group or a person. If this is Team B, was Team A at the house? How many more teams are there? I think uh, our best bets to uh, head towards Capilon is. As many people there as as every town that we've walked nearby on our way here. It's if if we're gonna look for a lead anywhere near here, it's it's gonna be there. Um, plus, we uh, do have all our stuff in a cart headed that way as we speak. Um, it's probably well, uh, you know, he's got about a forty minute lead on us now, but. Look, that's a flashy card. I'm hoping we can find it once we get into town. We should have put the it chain in the bag. Stay in the town. We should have put the chain in the bag. Next time. Next time, put a deal, pin in deal. it. Deal. Deal, deal, deal. Anything else? Yeah, I'm just going to check everyone. Like, there's, there's bodies everywhere. I was just kind of waiting for us yeah, to figure out where we're going. But I'm looting. I'm not above looting a corpse. Smart. That's very smart. If you guys are doing it as a group, I'll waive the disadvantage for you. Can we uh, also take a short rest while doing it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure, I'll say that over the course of this this conversation and over the course of checking the bodies, it's going to take about an hour or so. So yes, you can count that as a short rest. Okay. Now, how does a hit die work, Coach? A hit die is you have a certain number of hit die that you can roll to use or to regain health uh, on short rest. And then those hit die... R- uh, replenish each long rest. So okay. you can roll all of your hit die at a short rest. You can roll one. Just depends when you think that next long rest is coming. Well, I was thinking maybe after we search all these things, we call it a night slash morning and then head into town so we're fully rested. But We are going to be so late on this delivery. I mean, it's not, not even funny. We're not catching the chain. There's no way Venus is still. Here. It's also Venus a GM question. It's it's us. still night, is it not? We didn't yes, like leave the next morning. Night. We just took off in the middle of the night. Yeah, you left the. Uh, it's like two a.m. right now. Yeah, it was. Yeah, exactly. So we could now. The other question is how how far are we to Capilon still? At this point, after a certain time riding in the cart your best guess would be probably a third of a day to half of a day so you could reach it like if you went to bed now and you had to you know wake up at 10 a.m or so call it you could get there by three o'clock four o'clock are we still exhausted if we take a short rest a short rest yes but a long rest no i'm almost inclined to say we we set up camp and Try to find the chain in the in the afternoon. Yeah, let's maybe complete the uh, complete the well, looting of these. Is there, is there anything on these bodies? We, yeah, we gotta take look a look. At yeah, loot, loot. Do you want us to do collective roles or? Uh, yeah. So who whoever is investigating can roll at disadvantage, or somebody can roll neutrally because of the help mm-hmm. action. That's who's how you who's got it. a so good one? Up to you. Yeah, who's got a good investigation? I have a plus four to investigation, but I also just rolled it and it was a three. So yeah, a seven. We did not assign you as our leader, so That's what I wanted to say afterwards, is I didn't know. So maybe not me. Cause then we don't have to use that role. Jinxie, your dice has been hot all night. It, and yeah, mine's oh, been man. bad. If I use smell and I use the magnifying TV glass, does that mean I get double? Oh yeah, you have a magnifying glass. Does that mean I get Come double? On, you gotta give him advantage, advantage if he's using the magnifying glass. Uh, no, so how it works is you could have five things giving you advantage and one thing giving you disadvantage and it's neutral, so because of your exhaustion, yeah, whether or not it's being helped by your group or using the magnifying glass, it would be a neutral roll. Big roll, big Are roll. My okay. is not great, it's only like a two, I think. Yeah. 
Okay. Jinxie's looking. 16. Nice. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, a 16 is uh, good enough to find a second piece of information. Rolling over bodies. You can tell that the, and especially based on your conversation you had with the one who, you know, just just had his neck snapped. You can tell that maybe these aren't the most intelligent guys, not the brightest bulbs in the, in the bunch. And this is kind of confirmed by you finding uh, the note of somebody who was supposed to be on Team A and followed the wrong uh, kindergarten teacher, essentially. That's so funny. So team A. They're like yeah, going different so, directions. Like like they've got leaders up front, like holding flags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So on one of them, it says, Team A, escort the girl west. You know where to bring her. Guys, look at this note. It's not papers for Jinxie, but it's okay. Is it signed as well? Same, yep, same, uh, same mark. If they've taken Emily West, I, I, we can't just take off through the woods. I think it's still Capilon and go from there. But we have, we have a, a trail. West from John's house. Where's that? West from John's or house? West from or here. West from here? Mm, Jinxie does not know. West from somewhere. I mean, it could either be going into Kumdor or it's going into Wigazam. Those are the only two possible Wests from here. Or this area in general. Well, why, uh, why don't we head into Capilon? Look for leads, collect whatever cash we still can for this delivery, track down the rest of our packages before we do that if we can, and then uh, make a quick decision on uh, on where we're headed next. The captain approves. Sounds good to me, half master. Uh, quarter, quarter master, sorry. Uh... Before we head out, Hayes goes around and goes to all the bodies and puts their pants on backwards. Sure. <laughs> Fantastic. It's just, uh, it's, after it's just a thing I do. It's just, you know, it's it's my calling card. You're, you're the weapon. I'm trying, I'm just, I'm trying them out. I'm trying them out, okay? We have two jeans. I'm not used to this thief life. Yes. Well, that happens. Uh, is the move here that you're going to be spending a long rest here, or are we continuing on? I, it, they're sounded like to be. Yeah, in. let's let's I'm take a long very, rest. I'm thinking rest. Head out in the morning. Get there in the afternoon. Sell our stuff. Go from there. We have a lot we, of. We need a checkpoint, and need, I need so. health back. I need a safe spot. Okay. I do sure, want to say so. before we go. Yeah, to take our long rest. I would have brought Jinxie aside at this point. Like, put my arm around his head. I guess it'd be up like this. And, like, bring him in. Ooh, and, like, in his yard, be like, Football. You just made up in that fight for what you did in the river. That was incredible. What you did as a bear was one of the coolest things I've ever seen you do. And then you brought that guy back to life and we got some information out of him. And, and I spat in his mouth. And you listened and spat in his mouth, which I loved. That was incredible. This is so nice. I I knew you had a soft spot. Yeah, I guess so. Now get out of here. <laughs> That's our team name, the Softies. The Softies. No. I like Absolutely it. Absolutely not. The uh, Wrecking that's Crew. That's how we know that it's not happening. It's because Jinxie and Cambrio pushed it. <laughs> Showing this, I'm in the back. Try to figure out which way the pants should go on the guy whose neck got snapped around because I'm trying to figure out which way is funnier based on his face. So that's why I'm not part of that conversation. Um, Zed's gonna use some fancy magic, light a, a nice little fire. Uh, I'm gonna prepare some food so we can get rid of our exhaustion through this mm -hmm. long rest. What are you cooking? Just uh, just heating up some. Uh, Couple cans of beans, 
It's got some I'm pulling out the bread for the boys beans. out of my pocket. It's all the ass. buns I've been holding on to. Some Most of the old breakfast food. Uh, yeah. I immediately throw the food that, that Hayes has pulled out into the fire as essentially kindling because it's more like that it's, than It's edible. flavoring. I get it. Damn yeah, it. it'll get on the smoke. It'll help. Um, and uh, bring out just some bread, some, you know, small meat rations and uh, and some beans. You know, just a nice, hearty campfire traveling meal. You know what, Zed? It's not much, but it's honest work. I like that, that you just took the time to take care of your friends. Take a little DM inspo for that move there. Oh, thank you. Does that carry over episode to episode? Or is that a... Uh, we'll make it a case to case basis, but because I gave I it out, I thought it had the to be used minutes, immediately. I was pretty sure that was the rule. No, that was your rule. <laughs> no, that was your rule. Yeah, no, you can you can carry over as long as uh, you remember. Thank you. I psychic message the other two, being like, "Yeah, I, he threw my pocket bread out." But the weekend is pocket bread's fine. Oh, my chat That's works. Just Jesus, it's been a while. Welcome back Whoa, to the chat. Hey, Jixie! I, where you been, bro? I, this is great. You ain't been responded. We've been. Tra- Did you get a new brain number? Oh shit, man! You guys say you know new brain who dis? And I would have, I would have hooked it up right there. Zed's gonna look over at Jinxie, staring into the <laughs> yeah, air, just like, looking around, at, like, like clearly visualizing what he's looking, and just like, uh, <laughs> not happy with that bread move. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so good. Uh, okay, perfect. So if there's nothing else before bedtime, why don't we figure out who's doing watch and I'll do I'll do first watch. Okay. I'll take Captain's watch, which <laughs> is nine AM. Yeah, do we sure. call you Captain Cambrio or Captain Hayes? It's uh, Captain Goldilocks. Okay, okay. I'll be honest, I've never really thought of myself as a captain before. And I like it. You can call me captain whatever as long as you call me captain. That's the, the bare requirement. Yeah, uh, any name. No, you're the bare requirement. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll be honest, it'll probably suit, for reals though, it'll probably just suit you to call whatever face I have on just to for... Oh, you guys know Cambrio. I'll probably just be Cambrio. People get creeped out by the ghost child, as I like to call him, so, you know. Are you like Casper? I think you look cool as the ghost child. Uh, for, for whatever it's, it's worth, we like him. Just like super, technically, it's like my skin's never seen the sun because it's always like someone else. Sort of. It's just like super, super translucent and pale. I'm not dead. Like, I'm not a literal ghost kid, but just, just pasty. Are you Edward Cullen without the sparkles? Yeah, I'm not hot Edward Cullen. Yeah, like cool. the other kids in the yeah. class, I got no screen. <laughs> I changed my skin to make it sparkle. I could do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's get these rolls done quick. So, who's going first, Chode? That is a uh, twenty-three. Nice. Okay, perfect. So the first few hours of watch go by uh, fairly. Quietly, I will say that you do notice a few pibs up on the trees, those birds that you saw a few miles back when you first started this journey. But other than that, it is very quiet. I will say, while I'm on watch by myself and everyone else is sleeping, I'm going to be engraving a new uh, tattoo into my arm. And it's just going to say, uh, like, Mildred. That's it. Aww. Yeah. That's so cute. Uh, okay, perfect. Uh, do you want to uh, spend a few nights doing that so that you get it just right, or no, uh, more of like a no? stick and poke? I mean, I've done all my other tattoos. So it's a, it's, it's a rough aesthetic. Yeah. It's a whole. I just don't know if it was available it. to be seen right right away, or if this was kind of a slow burn. But yeah, perfect. Okay, so you have uh, a Mildred tattoo. That's very uh, very sweet of you. Who's up next? Uh, I'll go next. D- just a D twenty. Yep. Uh, plus your perception. Uh, 14. Uh, 14, yeah. So fairly quiet. I will say that the first hour and a half or so goes on without even noticing much of anything. Uh, however, the pibs do start stirring a little bit uh, around, what would this be now, 5 a.m.? Like, uh, almost as if they're kind of getting ready to go for the day. 
you do see two fly very close to you, Jinxie. And they begin kind of looking at you in almost like a bow dance courtship type thing. Like they're trying to get your attention almost. Ooh, Jinxie's going to stand up and just kind of slowly like walk towards them with his hands reaching out like, ooh. Okay, perfect. Um, do you want to roll me a history uh, check? Yes. Uh, fuck, a five. Yeah, with a five, you're not really sure uh, if you've seen these pibs before. Uh, but you can tell based on their gestures and their body language, and now they're chirping. You can tell that they've got something to say. Um, well, Jinxie is going to cast Speak with Animals. Perfect. So, you're, so the dirt magic flies Whoa. all around you. And, Envelops into your throat and Look like pig pen. to the to <laughs> He's the spinning <laughs> dirt in the bird's mouth. <laughs> uh, why did, when did his magic become dirt magic? Uh, he, I he love it. Yeah, just, uh, instead of just like flashy like lights, it's just dirt, little, little <laughs> dirt mud. spilling out of it was everything. Never asked before. What have I created? It was never asked. I love it. it never asked. So yeah, so you so you cast this magnificent spell, and the chirps. Uh, start going from Hey, hey! Hey, Jaycee! How are you doing? And the other one's like Oh, Jinxie, it's been so long! Do you remember us? Does Jinxie remember the them? Door. Uh, well, with your five history check, you don't. Okay. Um, <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, re- refresh my memory. It's It's been a wild couple days. Come, Come here, come here. In many moon cycles. And they fly they fly over to you and they, they, they perch on your tusks. Tusk. And they uh yeah, I guess yeah, tusk, well tusk. half of one tusk and then the full the full tusk on the other one. And they so they're almost like chirping right into your ears. And they say, uh We we have expected you to be there already. Hmm, yes, it's 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 taken a while. But wait, who who are you? I I I don't remember. Know exactly what we're talking about. And with that language, you're starting to figure out uh, who this message might really be from. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh. Oh yes, that's right. Quick, come, come over here. And I, Jinxie, kind of walks away from the group a little. Not that speaking in mini bird. Yeah, all they hear is like. <laughs> what the fuck is Jinxie doing? <laughs> We're also all asleep except for me, so I just see you wandering off with. Birds. I think he's. I think he's spitting mad bars. <laughs> yes, I, I. I. think I know what. You, what. Who you're talking about? It, I've. I've had a tough time getting up up there, and we've, we've just had some delays. So we'll we'll figure it out. But it's it's good that you found me. Well, just remember, we'll be watching, and we'll be reporting. And if you need anything, just holler. Well, what's the news in Capilon? Well, she's there. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Have you seen her? She's been doing business as usual. Hmm. However, we've been told that there's a package that's going to be delivered to you once you're there. You should know what to do with it. Okay. I will look out for it. And I'll see you again. Okay. Bye, Jinxie. We'll see you soon. Bye! And they float away. Uh, Who's up next for uh, Watch? Zed is gonna have to follow that up. Jinxie goes okay. and wakes Zed the up. birds from your from your art. Uh, maybe, maybe not. So k- kind of, yeah. So kind of, they're not technically pibs, but it's the it's the same idea. Are pibs like cool. gross bats? Pibs are the things we saw going up the river. Yeah, picture they're almost. Like you you guys forest. actually only ever saw the silhouette of them. It picture like a raven or a crow, uh, with almost like a. a beard of tentacles almost like feathered tentacles so they almost look like uh gross <laughs> yeah they almost look gross that's for sure uh they almost kind of look like a mind flare with a bird body but then the mind flare head is feathery very yeah, strange it's not, it's, not, it's not better it's not better that's true uh zed why don't you roll me a perception check for the night Seventeen. 
17, perfect, all is well, and the sun is beginning to crest over the mountains to the north. Uh, well, the sun's not coming from the north. It's coming from the east, but the sunlight is coming up from the north because you're very close to the Kundorian <laughs> mountain range that's just north of Capilon. <laughs> Shut up, Steve. Uh, <laughs> hey, man, the sun, the sun could go north to south in your world. It no, but, yeah. it it, but it doesn't. But it doesn't. But I'm stupid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the sun actually just appears. It turns on in the morning. Yeah. It goes off at night. Yeah, that's right. That's one of King Thane's many There's a god TVs. that just like wakes up and goes like, ah. Yeah, and, like, exactly. yeah, and it's just boom at noon. And then they're like, it's night time now. Yeah. And it's off. That's it's amazing. Uh, so yes. the morning is a fucking I, time. During my watch, mm-hmm. um, Zed perched up, you know, near the fire with a little bit of light as more light kind of surrounds him at the, you know, daybreak. Um, he's gonna pull out that uh, that diary that he got um, back from John before they left those many days ago. Sure, hasn't really had much of a chance to breathe and and you know take a look, but um, gonna open it up again. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna try and open the uh, the front of it as it is locked. I don't have a key, so I am going to try and pick the lock. Sure. Do you have thieves tools? Yes, I do. Roll me a sleight of hand with your proficiency bonus. Oh! I don't know how this is going to work, because it's a nat 20. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, your, I know it's not. There's no your thieves tools melt success. as they yeah. enter the arcane lock. Fuck. Motherfucker. Um, okay, I'm going to do an arcane check now. Or arcana check, sorry. That's you right. think it's magical. Well, I'm... <laughs> you get a good thank sense. you. No, thanks, <laughs> Hayes. It could um, be science behind this. I'm, I'm looking... <laughs> I'm more It'll looking to, luck. to get a little more insight as to the specific mm-hmm. magic that sure. is at play here. And that's only going to be a seven. Uh, yeah, so you get the sense that obviously this is an arcane lock and physical tools aren't going to be much help in opening it. Sorry, uh, one D&D, the natural 20 didn't work this time. Uh, however, I will say that with, even though it's a low arcana check, this is really the first time that you've spent any time with the diary and studying it and looking it over and seeing, seeing it for what it really is. And it's not just diary. As you bring the diary close to you, The amulet or the necklace around your neck uh, that is in the letter of a Z begins to glow a faint purple uh, magic glow, similar to the text that is on the front. It's the same font color as Hexius Duran that is on the cover of this leather diary. Nothing's happening yet, but you know that, or I should say, it seems like your necklace or your amulet has something to do with this magic, but it seems like there's missing pieces to the puzzle. Okay, I am. I'm gonna take my necklace off. Okay. Um, just to like hold them closer, but in sure. front of me, so it's not like I'm holding it in my chest where I can't see it. Yeah. Anything different happening? Other yeah. Than so just, you like, feel a very. It's almost like holding two magnets uh, that are opposite, or I uh, sorry, that are similar together. Like there's almost like a bubble of force in between. So it's it's funny. Your your necklace is attracted to the diary. Like it's almost like a magnetic pull towards it. And then about an inch away, there's resistance. It's that opposite force. So it's, you can tell like something about this fits together, but it's just, it feels off. It feels like it's not quite there. And there's no way for me to like fit this Z in as a, like a key or it doesn't fit onto the diary in any way. Why don't you roll me a straight intelligence check and I'll see what kind of hint I can give you. I'm really, really, really smart. Fuck. Four. All you know is that if whatever you, you, you're trying now is not going to open this book, unfortunately. Okay. I will say that you, you, get, a, you get a great sense of you're almost overwhelmed by like, holy shit, this is, you know, I may not have my memories for the past couple of months, but this is clearly one of the most powerful 
pieces of magic that I've ever had in my hands. So that should be the sense that you're yeah. taking away from this. Yeah, I was going to say, do, do I feel any differently as this energy grows between these two items? No. However, you know that like you, you get almost a intuition that opening this book is something that you want. Like, th- this is like all of a sudden like, oh, okay, I kind of see... Yeah. Maybe this Hexia strong guy was on to something. Like, who knows? I'm involved somehow, but, like, this is pretty cool. All right. Um, okay, I'm going to... Somewhat defeated, but yet definitely motivated. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna put this uh, necklace back on, kind of tuck it under, under my robes. I'm going to stick my uh, diary back in my, you know, inside of the robe kind of hip pocket if you will um definitely something i want to keep close um and uh seems about time for me to wake up uh cambrio hayes for the uh for the captain's watch before you do that as you're walking over to get him and be like hey uh any weird dreams tonight uh nothing (laughs) nothing tonight uh it's 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 funny, they're, uh, they're, they're terrifying, but, uh, I almost feel like I need to experience more of them. Like, I feel like it's another piece of the puzzle. So as much as I wake up in a, in a panic every time, it's something that I almost feel like I need more of or, or answers to, but, uh, Honestly, nothing since that other night. Cool. Just wanted to check. Appreciate it. And I'll uh, and I'll give uh, Cambria a little shake. <sighs> what? Uh, Captain's watch. Need your own captain to finish off the watch for you. Eh? I've already walked away. Uh, yes. Well, <laughs> Cambria looks around as he's walking. He's like, I guess I won't tell him about my dream, but I was inspired. And I know just what to do to solve our problems. And I go over to the guy whose neck was broken, and I take his pants off, turn them inside out, and then put them on backwards, and I go, perfect. And then I take out the captain's <laughs> log, and just while I'm watch, just sort of record the events of the day. Just, team is coming together, Jinxy back in the chat, uh, just all around great captaining. Oh, I and love the bullet my watch roll. Friends that's are a, very That's accepting. a seven. For the perception check. Yeah, it's okay. You guys went to bed late, so it's like 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. essentially this morning. I didn't so notice that it's light out. Yeah. That's the problem. <laughs> I didn't wake anyone up. So what I will say is, if you, if the plan is to continue on to Kaplan today, you will make it there in a few hours. So what we're going to do is we're going to essentially fast travel to that point, and we're going to begin next episode at the gates of Kaplan. But before that, This journey has taken far more hours and episodes than I had ever dreamed, and you have earned yourself a level up. Yeah! Guys, this sets the precedent. If we just drag it out for as long as we can, he'll just keep (laughs) going. Strike it from the record. (laughs) And we'll be level level 20 before we save him. Cue the theme song. Get us out of here. (laughs) No, no, I got level 20 before we leave Apple. How did you get in my room? How did you get in here? Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed our podcast, please rate and review five stars for the five stars of the show. A special thanks to Matthew for designing our map and to Isabel for creating our art. You can find their work on Instagram at Matthews underscore makings and at Laco Miles, L-A-C-O-M-Y-L-E-S. Thanks as well to Drew Hewitt and Arcane Anthems for doing our theme and background music. For music you too can use, visit patreon.com slash arcane anthems to add the perfect theme to your home game. You can follow more Eldritch Buds news on Instagram at Eldritch Buds or on our subreddit at r slash Eldritch Buddies.